Welcome back, viewers. We are here, historic downtown San Jose, in front of Adobe Building, talking to Hermit Dillon. Hermit, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ina. We've been meaning to talk for a long time. Here, it's a little chilly. Let's heat it up with our conversation. Okay. It's a pleasure to have you. Same here. So tell me how you got started. What was the turning point for you when you joined politics? Well, you know, I'm a child of immigrants. I'm an immigrant myself here to the United States. And my parents, when they became citizens, thought it was very important to become actively involved as volunteers in the political process. In their case, the Republican Party, which they're members of. And so right. they taught me about that. My mom was a volunteer election judge. And so I got my interest in politics from that. Well, how has your legal background helped you in politics? Well, uh, the legal training does help in the sense that a lot of uh, lawyers um, have the discipline about speaking in public. Uh, they have a focus and analysis of the issues. Uh, so those are some of the skills that you do learn in law school and more importantly in the practice of law and they come in handy in politics. Well, South Asians, as we know, uh, there are a few leaders, of course, but there's a handful. They're, they're not so aggressive and assertive when it comes to politics and joining actually. There's a huge gap between people wanting to be in politics and actually in politics. What would you say that gap is for and how would you close that gap? Well, you know, I think a lot of first generation immigrants and even some of the second generation immigrants, they tend to follow more traditional career paths that are more lucrative and more secure. Politics is not a secure career path and politics is not a traditionally respected career path even in the country that we come from. So I think that's one of the things that people have to change their mindset about is taking risks and looking at things from a different point of view. From my point of view as a leader of our community, um, I believe that it's very important for us in order for us to demand our equal rights and equal opportunity under the law to have a political voice sometimes uh, in Sacramento and in Washington. Particularly for the new generation that's coming up. I mean, for them to have a voice, they have to first get involved in politics and shaping pro policies and process, right? And this is a process that happens with every immigrant community. The first uh, generation tends to spend a lot of time trying to establish itself economically and educationally, and then as they're established, the second generation and the third generation begin to claim their rights as full members of society. Now tell me a little more about yourself. You are uh, a leader of the women po Republican political... I'm the chairman of the Republican Party of San Francisco, which means that for all of the um, you know 50,000 Republicans in San Francisco, I speak for them. I'm responsible for communicating with the mayor and other elected officials on issues of interest to the Republican Party. I help vet candidates who run for office in San Francisco as Republicans. I myself ran for office as a Republican candidate for the State Assembly in 2008. So beyond that, at the state level, I'm also very actively involved in the Republican Party in helping to recruit Asian American candidates for office to run from our party, as well as uh, speak to national leaders about issues of our community's interest. Now, when I say few South Asians, there are even fewer Republican South Asians, I would say. Now, they are Democrats, they are Republicans. How do you work together and come together in, in building the community and, you know, doing things for the community? Well, as a Republican, I don't want to work together. I want to work for the benefit of my party. And luckily, actually, this year we have a Republican candidate, uh, Ricky Gill, who's running for the state assembly um, in, um, in, from his uh, home county of San Joaquin. But um, equally, one of my friends is running for uh, uh, Congress as a Democrat here in the Bay Area, Ro Khanna, and he's a Democrat, and so I'd like to see him succeed as a South Asian. So there are South Asian political action committees that are bipartisan in nature, and um, I do contribute to and work with those groups. Well, I mean, there are big jobs and small jobs when it comes to volunteering or you know, helping the political process. Correct. We often get very overwhelmed that if you have to be in politics, you have to give this much time and per perhaps we don't have the time. And that holds us back from really joining and being actively part of in, in the policy. Tell us what are some of the so small jobs that we can do? Well, there are a number of different opportunities in politics, and the majority of those opportunities are volunteer opportunities, so it's really as much as you want to do. Um, you right. could um, stuff pamphlets for a candidate for your local school board. You could run for school board. Um, you could do some of the things that I did as I worked my way up, uh, volunteer uh, to register voters for your political party, um, go to a gurdwara or a temple and help register voters, uh, educate people about their citizenship rights at, at those places. Um, and eventually think about um, running for office yourself and being the spokesperson for a party. These are all very manageable things that can be fit into a normal um, professional career.